2003 Turtle series, which was incredible. But the um, gentleman who recommended me for the job was uh, Richard Elson, who oh, wow. just one of the loveliest people in the industry. Really, really supportive guy. So yeah, I was very true. lucky there. <laughs> and uh, Richard Elson is uh, obviously a very regular uh, person down here at Weston. <laughs> in fact, this time last year I was sat here with him. So oh, lovely. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, how did you... Obviously, we all got to Sonic in different ways, and obviously you've done illustrations for IDW and Sonic Casino. Where did you first find your love for Sonic? Okay, my first love of Sonic came with the Game Gear. Um, my brother had a Game Gear, I had a Game Boy, and I saw him playing this exciting new thing with colour and uh, sounds. <laughs> I, just, I just thought, what is that? And he said, oh, it's, it's Sonic the Hedgehog, it's all right. And slowly that Game Gear became not my brother's but mine because I would not get off Sonic the Hedgehog. I just fell in love with it very quickly. Not long after I saw demos in some of the shops for Sonic 2 and I saw his little sidekick and as someone who grew up loving foxes as their favourite animal, I just went, who is that? And that, that became my obsession then. I, was, I had to have a Mega Drive, I had to have Sonic 2 um, my poor mother had <laughs> to put up with that nagging for quite a while. <laughs> She's very sympathetic there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we've absolutely all been there as kids going, I need it. I need to do it. Well, it's it was life or death back then. Yeah, you know? no, it was, yeah. You're either Sega or you're a Nintendo on the streets. That was it. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, obviously you've done that. Do you still keep playing the Sonic games to this day? Do you keep up with it or is it a bit... Yeah, I do. Um, I did play Sonic Frontiers. I had... I had an up and down relationship with it. There was there was up, there was a bit of down in the middle, and then it went up again. And no, uh, those blasted grinder has a tear. <laughs> I think it was that um, lava island. Uh, yeah. Something yeah. about the way the camera kept swapping uh, swapping to two D would throw me off. But I'm always excited when a new Sonic game comes out. I can't help it. Even you know, I'm one of the victims of the old Sonic cycle. Um, I will always come back around to Sonic. I can't help it. <laughs> so, you've obviously worked with IDW, as we've mentioned. You've also done 2000 AD and various other bits and pieces through, through your career. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges you've faced in any of that? Okay. Um, I think the first time I worked for on the, an annual for IDW, I was really nervous. Because um, this was a dream from my childhood. You know, I grew up being pet panels from STC. And here I was trying to draw Sonic again and there are all these artists in IDW who I'm a huge fan of who are absolutely fantastic and and they were asking me to join in with that and it was absolutely nerve-wracking. Did find it it's different to sort of hit deadlines when you're working on something like that that you know you're going to get a lot of notes for. Um, there are some jobs that are more relaxed on how your characters look. Sega are very particular. They, they do want Sonic to look right. But um, at the end of the day, it was worth the work. You know, all the blood, sweat and tears that went into it were worth it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So, I mean, would you find, uh, I mean, how would you find that your practice has changed over time from when you've started to, like, today's nowadays? Is it about the same? Like, you take the same sort of practice tutorials before you get into it or have you changed up from where you started to where you are? Definitely changed. Um, I started off working on paper um, like all of us um, and then just as time went on it became quicker and more just easier to it, we didn't have space for things like a drawing table or light boards uh, light boxes um, so to find myself moving into working digitally um, it just saved so much time for me and just made a lot of sense. But, you know, I, I still will work on paper. And, but I find that it's, it's quite tough getting back into inking when you, you're holding your pen and you're still trying to press the button on the pen to undo what you did. So, so you're, finding, you're finding digital art a bit easier to do than just get back into paper then? Just, just more efficient. It's... Um, it is just quicker for me, but um, I do miss the, the paints and the, the, the pens. physical. Yeah, the physical stuff. yeah I, I can get that. Um, I mean, I, I keep going back to everything that you've worked with. 
But is there like the golden goose of brands that you want to work with? Is that something that still eludes you that you want to do, or do you think you've you've hit that and you just keep want to work with everything else? I think I have hit a golden goose with getting to work on Sonic. I don't think I feel very very lucky to get to work on this franchise. But if there was something I'd love to do again, I'd love to draw Ninja Turtles again. Like, my first love was Turtles, my second love was Sonic. Like. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure most of us grew up in the same sort of age with Ninja Turtles and Sonic, so <laughs> all falls within that sort of thing. Uh, have we got a question from anybody in the audience at all? <laughs> no? I, I guess I'll just have to keep going then. you have to hear, listen to more of my voice, I guess. So, I mean, you've obviously done a few pieces for IDW and Sonic in particular. Sorry, you, you, you've done a few Sonic pieces. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is there one that was particularly your favourite that you've done? Um, oh wow. I mean, when it comes to my published covers uh, for ADW, I think my favourite right now is the Amy Knuckles one. All right. Yes. Um, because I got to do a bit of classic Sonic stuff with it, um, and also it was coloured by Reggie, who is just one of my favourite colourists at the moment. He does. He's got a lovely sense of colour. Um, he's got great use of texture and half tone effects. So that's kind of like just, uh, I was so excited when I saw that one finished. Um, and in personal work, um, I did a piece of Sonic Art a few years ago of him running through the Green Hill Zone. And just, right. just doing the usual thing, going through the loop de loop. Um, and I'm still really fond of that one. It came out really nice. Do you, do you find that you have a lot of time to work on some personal stuff or is it just the deadlines are just very tight sometimes that you have to keep working? Definitely less time these days. Um, my full-time job, I work as a storyboard artist um, at a company called Surfing Giant. Um, so that's full-time. Yeah. Then I go home and I work for on Comics for the Phoenix and uh, Monster Fun, which I get to do with my lovely husband, Dave Bulmer. Some of you might know from uh, Sonic the Comic, the podcast. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> um, so that was kind of another dream come true, is that me and him make comics together. Yeah. Now we see our name together in Monster Fan, which is amazing. Um, I've, also, I've also got to fit in working on the odd microphone stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so my time ends up getting a bit filled up with that. Well, whenever I start to do my own personal sketching, it is it is when I find downtime. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, I think I'm pretty much exhausted myself. I mean, <laughs> is there anything you you want to like talk about, like stuff that you've you've found? Uh, oh, I mean, gosh. obviously we've gone over some of the challenges of like with deadlines and everything else. I mean, what's what's the, the fun part of that is it the actual like the finished product or do you find a certain fun step while you're doing it all or um i think yeah seeing the finished product once you have the colors on and the lettering work and that's when it suddenly becomes a real comic book and it's it's just oh that's so nice but my first published work for idw came out during the early lockdown so it was a really long time before i finally saw my work in a comic book shop and um, I'd worked for nearly 15 years as a, um, a manager and an assistant manager in a comic book uh, store <laughs> forgot to say the last word then um, <laughs> and so I'd always thought to myself it would be lovely to see my work on these shelves one day and that kept getting delayed and delayed because you know it was uh, it was a very serious situation. We were all no, absolutely. We were all missing going out and seeing the shops. But that day when I finally saw my cover on the shelves in my old shop that I worked at was just so what, nice. Yeah, no, I can I can imagine your local shop. You go in. Wow, oh, there's my yeah. thing right there. That's really good. It I felt mean, real then. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure growing up and being as enamoured with Sonic as we all are in the room, like we wouldn't be here if we weren't. Let's be fair. <laughs> I mean, we've all, I'm sure everybody in this room has tried to dabble at, tried to draw or tried to write something. I presume you yourself, did you try to write your own comic when you were young? Definitely. I mean, when I was, uh, when I was little and um, reading STC, I spent a long time, I'd sit down, I'd put on a long video, like just set up a whole series of uh, Red Dwarf or something like that. 
and I'd just sit there with those videos playing and I'd spend all day drawing my own comics. Comics that no one ever saw. Like, I just had boxes and boxes full of these pages. Um, and then eventually, you know, uh, my late teens, I got online, um, met my lovely husband, and one of the first things me and him did was start making our own comics. And um, one of the things we always struggled with was actually finishing them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were about to go to university at the time, so I think we released, what was it, one issue? Maybe two issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you were ever online back in the what early 2000s and um, I can't even remember what the comic was called was it Strictly what was it called Sonic Ideal oh my god that's a that's a bit knobby isn't it <laughs> but I mean we were about 18 or something so <laughs> Oh, don't blame Dawn Best for anything. She's lovely. <laughs> um, but no, we had we we always wanted to make comics, but at that time we had no sense of like getting things finished at all. We tried, but <laughs> I, I think that's a plague that just hits every creative, uh, regardless of what you're in. <laughs> I will start a million projects and I will never finish them. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many of my own stuff is just sat on the on the drawing room floor oh, no. sometimes. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it's great. Obviously, Dave himself obviously is a, a big creative help, I find, at times. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I do like coming up with story ideas. Um, I wrote a bit when I was younger, but I've never been fully confident about my writing. So when Dave sort of became like my writing partner as well, he would take these ideas that I could never quite get down, and he always would just make these lovely scripts out of them. Um, we ended up making... Um, uh, a very cute independent comic called Imaginary Gumbo. Oh, right. uh, something we'd still like to, to finish off at some point, but we were so proud of what we did on that. And I mean, I remember the first time he gave me a script for it. It was just so nice to see these characters, their, their words finally you know, happening in a way that I couldn't quite quite figure out myself. Yeah, it's, I, it's when you've got that visual in your mind, I mean, it's finally there for you to see and that other people can appreciate as well. Yeah, no, I fully get that. <laughs> Okay, uh, um, I think we're done, unless there's anything you want to say. Do you want to plug all your socials and people for people um, in the room for not following you? Okay, well, um, I used to be able to just say I have a Twitter, but um, that's less of a thing now. Um, I am on Blue Sky and Instagram and Tumblr. Um, so you can generally find my artwork if you just search my name. That's quite easy. Um, I should be doing some more My Little Pony work soon, so Ooh. you'll see me popping up again there. Um, but each week I'm usually in the Phoenix. Um, currently I have a regular strip called Doggo, which is one of the favourite things I've ever worked on. Um, and uh, we should be doing a new story soon called the Earth Defence Club. Ooh. So if you have any kids or are just a big kid yourself like all of us um, and would love to read a weekly comic, the Phoenix is one of the best out there. It's really lovely. Great mix of stories. And Jamie Smart is in it, who's one of the best best British creatives out there right. um, and then um, uh, you can also hear my husband each week on uh... oh yeah uh, but first my husband does a podcast with Chris McFeely called Sonic the Comet the Podcast so if you, if you enjoy listening to two old men talking about Sonic comics <laughs> that is the podcast for you and now and then I will pop in but uh... <laughs> we also uh, are in uh, Monster Fun each month doing a strip called Martha's uh, Monster Makeup, um, which is great fun. It's very uh, Beano or uh, Buster-esque. So if you like that kind of old school comic, then that's for you. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's all give Abby a big round of applause. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, Abby is just out the back.